Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the eighth lecture of the series. In the last lecture, we had got introduced to the concept of variation of a functional. We first uh, recalled the definition of the differential of a function, which was defined like this. We had a function f x from a to b to r and we considered its differential uh, defined as uh, d f equal to f prime x uh, d x, where uh, for independent variable uh, x d x equal to delta x. So, for an independent variable uh, the differential is equal to the increment itself. So, for a function f we saw that its increment delta f is actually equal to uh, f x plus delta x minus uh, f x and that if it f is differentiable, then it can be written as, as we have seen. In the case of a function, we have here delta f equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x and if f is differentiable, then we saw that this is actually equal to f prime x delta x or d x is same thing d x plus some beta x delta x times delta x. Similarly, for the functional i y we saw that this the increment delta i y which is same thing as the difference i at y plus this delta small delta y denotes the variation in y which is uh, so delta y we know that delta y equal to uh, y tilde x minus y x which is the difference between the ordinates of uh, two curves y x and y tilde x. So, for this minus i of y and we say that uh, like we defined uh, f is differentiable if and only if uh, the following holds. Then similarly for the functional i, we say that uh, i uh, the variation uh, delta i exists, a small delta i, small delta i exists if and only if, if this dis, uh, increment del capital delta i, which is by definition i of y plus delta y minus i y if this difference is equal to here some linear part in the increment which is function of y as well as this variation delta y and plus some beta y delta y and here the absolute value of this maximum of mod delta y. Here this maximum is that maximum norm in uh, c k is c for any c k x x 1 to x 2 if y belongs to this we define uh, this norm here for k equal to 0 we define norm of y which is maximum of mod y x maximum over x 1 x 2 interval and if k equal to 1 we define this as norm this as 0 norm we can say and then y 1 norm maximum over x 1 to x 2 of mod y x plus mod y prime x maximum separately we take maximum of this 
plus maximum of x1 to x2 of y prime x. So, similarly for any general k we take y k for general k we take the c k norm as summation maximum over x 1 to x 2 of this y j norm j equal to so the maximum of y j th derivative of x like this. So, here we take the 0 th norm that is the, this one maximum here. So, we say that this increment delta i uh, if this difference is of the form if it can be expressed as l y delta y plus beta delta beta comma delta y and this is the 0 th norm define this of the uh, increment delta y this can also be written like this l y delta y plus beta y delta y and this 0 th here maximum this is like this and 0 th norm like this. this maximum is over that interval x 1 to x 2. So, here we and this L in this so L y delta y is linear let us say this is 8.1 in eight point one we are L y delta y is linear in delta y and this beta y delta y sorry this is small delta because like in independent variable here uh, d x and delta x are same. Similarly, here for this independent variable y here we will have uh, this increment and the variation same. So, this delta y this goes to 0 as this maximum delta y 0 norm goes to 0. So, we say that this i the functional i has variation uh, this delta i y provided uh, 8.1 holds and this linear part and this delta y is defined as l y delta y which is the linear part in the increment. So, that is the definition here this linear part like here this linear part is called differential uh, the, we say that this d f equal to f prime x d x. So, that is what is called differential. Same way we define uh, the variation delta y here which is the linear part in this increment given by 8.1 if uh, 8.1 holds for the functional i. So, this was equivalently uh, then uh, defined. So, by the uh, fact that this d f is also 
del f of x plus alpha delta x over del alpha at alpha equal to 0. Same way this we have seen that the this delta i uh, y here is this is d f at x obviously and then this is defined as del i y plus alpha delta y over del alpha alpha equal to 0. Here uh, this is an equivalent definition of this, this is 8.2. So, here the second part of this 8.2 let us say this is A and this is B. So, 8.2 B gives an equivalent definition of the variation delta i y of the functional i y provided 8.1 holds. We are saying that uh, variation exists if and only if 8.1 holds. So, under that assumption we see that the equivalent definition of the variation delta i can be given by this 8.2 b and so this is what we use. Uh, for uh, con uh, getting necessary condition which is Euler's equation for uh, any function any function optimizing the functional i. So, that is what we had got in the last lecture here we had got. So, for this functional we saw that so this functional we considered uh, that is the first step here the simplest one where we i y is given by x 1 to integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y uh, y prime x uh, d x. Here y is assumed to satisfy certain additional conditions than continuity because this integral involves y prime and so uh, this should be integral should be defined in the sense of Riemann. So, y is assumed to, to be in the admissible class where y prime will have a smoothness property. So, here uh, this function uh, functional i is then changed to function phi alpha uh, using uh, this uh, x, uh, using this substitution here i y plus alpha delta y. So, then it uh, becomes x 1 to x 2 f of x y plus alpha delta y x plus y prime x plus alpha delta y prime x because here delta y x is taken like this y prime x minus y x and here only alpha is changing uh, this y and y prime y tilde are uh, fixed here only we are changing alpha therefore, this uh, functional then becomes only function of alpha and we use the usual rule of finding uh, the values of alpha for which this uh, phi will become maximum. So, we see that if y has to if y has to optimize because uh, y is obtained when alpha is taken 0. So, we see that uh, it, the necessary condition for y to optimize this is that phi prime alpha must be 0 at alpha equal to 0. So, that is what we impose here we differentiate this functional with respect to alpha partially and we get the following x 1 to x 2 integral of f y x plus alpha delta y x and then this argument is differentiated with respect to alpha which leaves delta y x plus then f is differentiated with this third argument that is y prime plus alpha delta y prime x and then this is differentiated with respect to alpha which leaves delta y prime x d x. Now, here with this second term in the integrand, we use the integration by parts. 
here we shift this derivative onto this f uh, y prime plus alpha delta y prime, which gives us this minus d by d x of f of y prime x plus alpha delta y prime x. And here this term is not disturbed and so we take out this which is freed from here delta y and we take that common from both the terms here and we get the boundary term like this evaluated at x 1 to x 2. Now, since at the moment we are taking only fixed boundary conditions that the points a and b are fixed and therefore, since y and y tilde uh, pass through these two points. So, we get delta y at x 1 and delta y at x 2 equal to 0, because delta y since delta y at x is y tilde x minus y x and therefore, this at x 1 as well as x 2 will be 0, because both y and y tilde are passing through uh, the points a and b. And so, we get this del, del over del alpha partial derivative of this i y plus alpha delta y uh, the following, because the bounded term vanishes and uh, here we use the fundamental. Uh, so, we put alpha equal to 0 here which then gives us this 7.2 which was described in the last lecture. And now, this integrand has to be 0 which follows uh, from uh, since this variation is arbitrary here, because all this y and y tilde are you can take any arbitrary y and y tilde and therefore, this is true for any uh, variation here and therefore, we use this fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations like this that if we have two functions f and g continuous, uh, if we have this function f fixed function which is continuous from a to b to r and this integral a to b f x g x d x equal to 0 for all continuous functions uh, on this interval, then f x must be identically 0. So, this is to be proved which we will establish today uh, in this lecture. So, we use this to conclude that uh, this integrand is 0 and that is what is called Euler's equation. So, Euler's equation is uh, the necessary condition for y to optimize the functional i. So, here we establish this fundamental lemma. So, this proof of the fundamental lemma. So, we want to show that we want to show that if f from a to b to r is continuous and integral a to b f x g x d x equal to 0 for all g, g from a to b to r continuous, then f x must be identically 0. So, suppose contrary that f x is not identically 0. So, suppose contrary that there exists x there exists x 0 in the interval a to b such that f x 0 is not equal to 0. Now, here if a situation can occur that it could be either a or b. So, it is like this if x 0 is a 
or b so if x0 a then fx0 could be here or it could be below here so we can multiply by minus uh, we can replace f by minus f and then uh, assume that uh, it is on the uh, upper the side of this xx so without loss of generality suppose that f of x0 is positive since it is not zero so either it is negative or it is positive so assuming that uh, if it is negative we can multiply by minus and uh, then consider uh, minus fx instead of fx and then uh, conclude for minus fx and whatever holds for minus fx we then conclude fr uh, from uh, that for fx so we can assume without loss of generality that f of x0 is positive here so if it is uh, at the end points then we take only uh, if it is the left end point we take the interval some interval or neighborhood round a on the right of this and if it is the right end point then we take neighborhood around this point uh, around b in the inside the inter, uh, interval a b if it is an interior point like this then we can take never around this x0 so there exists so by continuity there exists r greater than 0 such that such that here x0 minus r to x0 plus r intersection this a b such that on f x is positive like since it is positive so by continuity it continues to remain above here so there is a neighborhood around this such that this is will remain here similarly if it is here then uh, somewhere uh, f of x0 is here and so by continuity remains above the x axis similarly if it is uh, the right hand point then it remains above like this by continuity so we will have this thing now we construct here So, by continuity uh, there exists r greater than 0 such that on this interval neighborhood around x0. So, x0 minus r to x0 plus r intersection a comma b. So, if, if uh, this x0 is interior point then this can be taken in, in inside. So, uh, and this intersection will be uh, this interval x0 minus r to x0 plus r itself. But if it uh, if x0 is the end point then only the right side of that will come within the intersection or if x0 is the right end point that is b then uh, you will have only the left side of this interval coming in in the intersection so that way uh, we have a neighborhood around here this either at this end point or if x0 is interior point then like this and if uh, x0 is the uh, in, uh, right end point b then we have this interval around this which we can denote so there exists so there exists interval let's say c comma d which is inside a b such that this fx is positive on c comma d now we construct eta like this so we construct eta let eta x or g x be x minus c into d minus x here uh, 
if x belongs to c comma d and g x equal to 0 otherwise then we can see that here on this interval if it is say this uh, right and if x 0 is right hand point then c d can be taken like this if it is interior point then the c d interval can be taken like this or c d interval can be taken right like this if x 0 is the right end point. So, this interval so uh, here eta will be taken positive uh, like this and vanishing uh, at the end points uh, as well as at the other parts. So, eta is like this or g x rather. So, here you have this interval a to b. So, let us see supposing that x 0 is here interior and you have this interval c d like this. So, g x is something like parabola like this because this is parabola here and here it is 0 so end point at c also it is 0 and here this is 0 and on c and d it is strictly positive and so g x is positive on open interval c comma d. Thus, integral a to b f x uh, g x d x is since uh, g x is 0 outside. So, it reduces to c to d f x g x d x and here both the things are strictly positive. So, you get strictly positive a contradiction. diction that integral a to b f x g x d x is 0 for all g all continuous g continuous on uh, a to b. Clearly, g is continuous here, uh, but the integral a to b f x g x d x is strictly positive it is not 0. So, uh, there cannot be uh, such a case that. So, therefore, hence f x must be identically 0. So, now uh, we had got uh, this. Now, here we have seen that, that x 1 to x 2 f y minus d by d x of f y prime delta y x d x equal to 0 and this is for all admissible variations delta y. Here we are assuming that y is assumed to be sufficiently smooth such that is f y minus d by d x of f y prime is continuous. Hence, by the fundamental fundamental theorem lemma of the calculus of variations. we have this f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0, which is uh, Euler's equation. So, it is known as Euler's equation. So, 
So, let us see some applications of Euler's equation. Here we consider few examples. The first one is let us consider I y integral 0 to 1 y prime square minus y square d x y 0 equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 1. So, here we have uh, the integrand f. So, comparing it with uh, the general form. So, comparing it with the general form. i y equal to x 0, so x 1 to x 2 f x y x comma y prime x d x. We have f x y y prime equal to y prime square minus y square. So, Euler's equation f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 implies in this case that minus 2 y. So, f y is minus 2 y here minus d by d x of this f y prime is 2 y prime equal to 0. So, this implies that y plus y double prime equal to 0 and which has solution, the general solution rather as y x equal to a cos x plus b sin x. Now, we use the boundary conditions so, y 0 equal to 0 implies a equal to 0. So, then hence y x is b sin x. Now, y 1 equal to 1 implies that b sin 1 equal to 1 and therefore, b equal to 1 over sin 1 and thus hence y x is actually sin x over sin 1. So, that is how we obtain. So, this y x is the function which will optimize this functional. Whether it will minimize or maximize that will be subsequently seen. We will have sufficient conditions to determine whether an extremal uh, actually minimizes or maximizes. Now, the second example is i y equal to 0 to 1 y prime square plus x y d x y 0 equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 1. So, in this example now comparing it with the standard form 
we see that the integrand is. Uh, so, this is f x y y prime this function is y prime square plus x y and so Euler's equation f y minus d y d x f y prime equal to 0 implies f y is x here minus d by d x of 2 y prime equal to 0 or x minus 2 y double prime equal to 0 or y double prime equal to x by 2. So, this implies y prime equal to x square by 4 plus a or and then y of x equal to x cube by 12 plus a x plus b. So, now these a and b are to be determined using the uh, given conditions. So, y 0 equal to 0 implies that b equal to 0 and so, so y is x cube by 12 plus a x. Now, y 1 equal to 1 implies that 1 equal to 1 by 12 plus a or so this implies that a equal to 11 by 12. Hence, y x equal to 1 by 12 x cube plus 11. So, that is the extremal given here. Now, the next example we consider here i y is x 0 to x 1 or rather x 1 to x 2 we are using. x 1 to x 2 integral y square d x and the conditions are y at x 1 equal to a and y at x 2 equal to b. Now, here f is x y y prime is simply y square. So, the variables x y uh, y only uh, variable y is present and x and y prime are absent in this. So, we have so Euler's equation f y minus d by d x of f y prime to 0 implies that 2 y equal to 0 or y equal to 0. So, that means, x axis is the uh, sol uh, solution of this Euler's equation and if so, here situation is like this only this x axis is the so here this is x 1 this is x 2. Now, if a and b are not 0 if a or b is not equal to 0 then there is no solution in the space of in the space of continuous functions. So, if our 
admissible class is the space of continuous functions on the interval x 1 to x 2, then uh, there is no solution here, because uh, this if let us say both x 1 and x 2 are not 0, uh, if both a and b are not 0. So, this is x 1 a comma a and this is let us say somewhere here x 2 comma b and we see that here it cannot pass through these two points, because y is identically 0 here. So, y equal to 0 for all x. So, this is the candidate for extremizing the functional i and even if we try to take approximation here like this, but it will never be 0, it can be reduced, so, i can be reduced as much as we want, but it 0 cannot be re, uh, made here. For any y here, this will be i y will be positive for any continuous y, y on x 1 to x 2. And only solution is the discontinuous solution is the discontinuous solution which gives you which gives i y equal to 0 that is the following. So, this is x 1, this is x 2 and here is a and here is b. So, this simply drops like this and goes like this and this. So, that is a discontinuous solution here. So, in this case there is no solution in the space of continuous functions. Now, the next example is if you consider i y equal to x 1 to x 2, here some function m x y plus n x y y prime d x. So, here f x y y prime is actually equal to m x y plus n x y y prime. So, Euler's equation f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 implies m y plus n y y prime minus d by d x of n x y here, all these are functions of x y equal to 0. So, that is m y plus n y y prime minus. Now, this is total derivative uh, of n x y. So, first gives you n x minus n y y prime equal to 0. So, this cancels here. So, we get m y minus n x equal to 0. Now, uh, here this gives you a curve and if it does not pass through the points x 1 to x 2. So, a solution of this, this is an algebraic equation in x and y and so, is a curve which may not pass through x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2. 
if they pass also then there is a only one curve and so this is not a problem of optimized in this case and if so no solution in general so no solution in general if my minus nx is identically zero then when it uh, this reduces to an identity then we see that that m dx plus n dy equal to 0 is exact and then i y is x 1 to x 2 m dx plus n dy and this so there exists then uh, some function of x y since it is exact so therefore this will be some function u existing such that m dx plus n dy is equal to the total derivative of u of this x y here and so this is at the value u at x 1 x 2 at y at x 2 minus u at x 1 y at x 1 and so uh, this is a fixed quantity a fixed quantity so therefore in this case also it is not a problem of optimization it's not a problem of uh, the calculus of variation for example if we take if we have the let's say in this case i y 0 to 1 y square plus x square y prime dx and y 0 equal to a and y 1 equal to b then in this case we have f as y square plus x square y prime and f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 implies that uh, 2 y minus 2 x equal to 0. So, it implies y equal to x. So, this line y equal to x is the y equal to x is the candidate for this optimization optimizing this functional and if a if a is not equal to 0 or if b is not equal to 1 then no solution so and if a equal to 0 and b equal to 1 then only we have y equal to x as extremal as the as the candidate x gives the optimal value of i. Now, if we have i equal to i of y equal to x 0 to x x 1 to x 2 y plus x y prime d x and y at x 1 
equal to a and y at x 2 equal to b. Now, in this case we have f as y plus x y prime. So, f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0 implies uh, that 1 minus 1 which is 0 identically. So, we get the identity here hence which is an identity now we see that we observe that that this i y equal to x 1 to x 2 we can write it this y plus x y prime d x can be written as x 1 to x 2 d of x y here and so this is actually x y evaluated x y evaluated at x 1 to x 2. So, this is uh, x 2 y at x 2 minus x 1 y at x 1 and which is an ad, which is a fixed quantity a fixed quantity here. So, this is not a problem of optimization. So, like this there are many problems which although appear as optimizing problem, but uh, as problem of calculus of variations, but they are not. So, we will actually uh, take the genuine cases of the such problems in the next lecture. Thank you very much for being.